everybody! 大家好 I welcome you to J Palace Yamingo. My name is Yaya. This is a very unique musical instrument that most people have not seen. But what makes it special? So let's get started. This instrument is called a bian zhong. What is a bian zhong? It is a large instrument made of 64 bronze bells of varying sizes, mounted on an elaborate frame, sometimes referred to as chime bells, which require five members to play by striking the bells with a wooden mallet to produce music. Not to be confused with the bian qing, which is a different instrument. Bian qing also need to be struck to produce sound, but they use stone, jade. Or bronze plates as chimes instead of bells. The bian zhong is the oldest clapperless bell in Chinese history. And while bells weren't just specific to China, but bell sets were made into musical instruments only in China. This instrument wasn't just made for orchestral reasons, but to show status. The bian zhong was a special instrument that was only meant for the upper class. Meaning that it was also a symbol of wealth and power. The origin of this instrument can even be dated back to around 2100 BCE, but were more predominantly seen during the Zhou Dynasty. As a contrast, keep in mind that bells over two feet in height did not appear in Europe until around 1000 CE. The bells that we see now were developed in the Zhou Dynasty. It was most likely through experimentation in bell making that the ancient Chinese were able to figure out that they could make a bell that produced two different tones. They weren't played individually, but as a part of a form of ritualized court music, it was played along with strings, percussion, and wind instruments. We do see this instrument in later dynasties, but by the time of the Qing and Tang dynasties, they decreased in size, which limited them to sets of 14, 16, and 24 bells. Also, due to different construction purposes, these bells were only able to produce one pitch instead of two pitches, like those of the Zhou dynasty. Modern Bianzhong reproductions are 16 bells suspended vertically in a two-tiered frame, which was standardized since the Song Dynasty. There is one particular set that we have found that allowed us a better understanding of this instrument: the Bianzhong of Marquis Yi of Zhen, Zhen Hou Yi Bianzhong. Prior to this piece, we have unearthed a couple of artifacts from different dynasties, but they were never a full set. Maybe a couple of bells, but never complete. The Bianzhong of Marquis Yi of Zhen is the most famous set unearthed because it is the most extensive and intact. Here's a little bit of background on this particular set. It was found in the tomb of Marquis Yi of Zhen. Zhen Hou Yi Mu in the state of Zhen, Zhen Guo, and he was a lover of music. The Bianzhong of Marquis Yi of Zhen was made in 433 BCE during the Spring Autumn period in the state of Chu. But why was it made in the state of Chu and not in the state of Zhen? The state of Chu wanted to take over the state of Zhen, but the king of Chu, Chu Hui Wang. Liked the Marquis Yi so much that he left the state alone. This set is a memorial piece to the Marquis from King Hui of Chu. King Hui liked the Marquis so much that it was recorded that he rushed his trip from the west just to create the bells and attend the funeral of the Marquis. Not just the Bianzhong. When the Marquis died, the King of Chu made all of the instruments that the Marquis Yi loved and buried them with him, so that he could live his afterlife with what he enjoyed. The state of Chu was one of the larger states, and therefore had the available funds to make such an extravagant piece. The tomb was unearthed in 1978 and had one of the largest set of ritual bronze vessels. 
along with the Bianzhong, buried in the tomb, were also an additional 125 piece orchestra and 25 musicians. The Bianzhong of Marquis Yi is one of the most important sets ever excavated. The bells are hung on two sets of wooden racks. One rack is around 24 feet long and 8 feet wide. The other rack is around 11 feet long and 9 feet wide. These two racks are perpendicular to each other. The smaller beams are mounted on the upper beams. A series of six bronze human figures with raised arms separate and support the ends and intersections. There are 64 bells which are hung on three levels and are divided into eight groups. On the top level are three groups of 19 bells. Middle level is three group of 19 bells and the bottom level has two group of 12 bells. Bells range in size and weight. The largest bell is around 60 inches in height and weighs 449 pounds, with the smallest bell only 8 inches in height and weighing 5 pounds. What was so amazing was that this set is so well preserved, it is still in playable condition. In fact, it has been played three times since its excavation, the most recent being the Hong Kong reunification ceremony in 1997. This artifact is now on the list of Chinese cultural relics forbidden to be exhibited abroad, meaning that this artifact cannot be borrowed or rented for exhibits and is permanently displayed at the Hubei Provincial Museum. So what makes this particular instrument so special? Every culture has bells. So what makes the Bianzhong stand out? Different tones. What does that mean? Each bell can play two tones depending if it is struck from the front or from the side. In addition, the tonal range of the bells are from C2 to D7. In the middle area of the tonal range, these bells can play all 12 half tones, making this the earliest instrument in the world to play all 12 half tones. The thing is, these bells were made thousands of years ago. How did the ancient people do it? Structure and metal composition of the bells played a key role in how these bells were played and sounded. That is what makes these Chinese bells so much different than the bells of Western culture. If you look at the bells, you will notice that unlike the bells you're probably used to, they are not round, but an ellipse shape, meaning that they're more oval shaped. The edges of the sides are longer than the edges in the middle. There's a very important reason why these bells are not round. The sound of regular round bells last too long, making it harder to play any music with. The ellipse shape that the ancient Chinese have developed allows the sound to decay faster. The ellipse shape is also what allows the different tones to be played from two different directions. A specific composition of metals make the bells. 12.5% tin, 2% lead, and 85.5% copper. It is the precise ratio of these metals that control the exact tone of the bell. But this isn't the only factor. Dimensions of the mold have to be exact, or else the sound will be messed up. A quick little tidbit. Sometimes artifacts of smaller ones like the ones I have can also be found but they weren't meant to be used as decorations or were meant to be played. Instead, they were used for burial. Remember how these bells were symbols of privilege? Which means that people also wanted them in their afterlife. Just as their wealth symbols, they were very costly to make. Marquis Yi only had a full set because the state of Chu funded it. But not everybody had the ability to make full sets of bells just for burial purposes. Therefore, some compromises had to be made. 
So, tiny bells. Trying to figure out how they made these bells has been an educational journey. We've made replicas and copies, which is possible with modern tools, but we're still trying to figure out how the ancient people achieved it without modern technology. How did they get such precise tones? Bianzhong have shocked archaeologists worldwide due to the fact that it was incredibly rare for an ancient civilization to achieve this type of technology, especially for an instrument that was created over 2,000 years ago. This instrument shows ancient China's achievement in bronze casting, which makes it a symbol of pride for our culture, the epitome of high wisdom of ancient Chinese people. Preservation of these bells are so important because we're not just preserving an artifact, we are preserving the sound of our past, the sound of our ancestors. I have a Teespring if you'd like to support the channel. I have a lot of super cute designs that I'm really proud of, so please check it out if you can. Link is in the description below. So what do you guys think? Have you heard of this instrument before? Leave a comment down below because I would like to know. Please leave a comment if you can. It really does help out small channels like mine. You can also let me know what topics you would like to see me cover in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to Jade Palace Yamping Gong. I would very much appreciate it. And until next time, 再见啦! Bye bye!